Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. An unhappy Fraser Kendo is likely to take further legal action against the WBA after the sanctioning body dumped him from their rankings. So Fraser Kendo has been in the rankings for years despite not having fought, but that was down to him being owed a title shot. That title shot, uh, which he was due, ordered by a court to happen. So back in 2014, he fought Ruslan Chugaev. He lost, but he managed to wrangle in a rematch clause. It was never honoured. He took them to court about uh, two years after that, and the WBA has meant to deliver on that title shot ever since. But it hasn't quite happened. It's almost happened a number of times. Was meant to face uh, Mahmoud Char. Was meant to face potentially other fighters. But uh, now the WBA, after all these years of having Fraser Kendo ranked quite highly at times, he was at number three forever in a day. Last year they dropped him to number 15, and now they've dropped him altogether. So I went to Fraser Kendo and I asked him, what's actually happened? Because my first thought was, well, perhaps there's been some sort of resolution with the WBA, because after all, he is a guy who's in his uh, late 40s now, and there is a sort of health and safety concern that a number of us would ask about, you know, if you fight someone who's in their prime, is this actually starting to get dangerous? So I thought, well, maybe something has been worked out with the WBA. But apparently not. So I asked him, hi, Frez, I see the WBA has taken you out of its top 15. Have you reached some form of deal slash resolution with them? So he responded, and this was on social media. He is in the process of selecting a pit bull attorney to address their violating my federal rights. And when he wrote there, he had a WBA in brackets. So not happy, and he is going to potentially take legal action against them. At different points since he got that um, decision in his favor about four years ago, he has gone back to court to reaffirm um, the position that he is owed a title shot. And this is why um, you know boxing fans have seen him ranked for so long, despite the fact that he hasn't been in the ring now for six years. So obviously his last time out, he lost to Ruslan Chigaev and he was owed that title shot. It's never come and he hasn't stepped in the ring since. He has sort of said publicly he thinks the WBA should actually, you know, just declare him a champion. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the end game is here for Frizzikendo. Kendo. Obviously, he's starting to get the, uh, to the point in his life where does it actually make sense for him to be, you know, saying that he's going to be fighting for a heavyweight world title. But obviously, with this uh, court order that he has in his pocket. Uh, he feels that the WBA, with this latest move, dropping him from its rankings, is violating, as he says, his federal rights. So this is going to get probably a bit messy and murky, and we can only speculate why the WBA has done this. I mean, especially given that it had held him in the rankings uh, because of that court order for years and years and years. I mean, it looked like it was starting to get a bit ridiculous because just there was no resolution in sight and seemingly still no resolution in sight. So for Frizzer Kendo, He's sort of uh, waiting, watching. He wants to uh, have this resolved. And for the WBA, they're carrying a fighter in their rankings that isn't fighting. So not ideal for both parties concerned. But um, yeah, what's prompted this, though? Is this an error? I mean, it'll be interesting to see next month's rankings because maybe this is some sort of oversight by the WBA, someone updating their rankings and he was dropped out. Or if this is a deliberate move, perhaps they think, well, actually, you know, he might have got us once before in court, but if uh, we can, uh, you know, sort of push him out now, we don't have to honor this. Maybe they think they've found a loophole in that order. Perhaps there was some sort of a time bound, you know, part of it that after a certain point that it was uh, null and void. I don't know. There could be all manner of reasons for, for acting in the way that the WBA has dropping him from the rankings. But uh, yeah, it's uh, certainly a development that I think many of us have been looking to sort of have some clarity and re resolution on because the WBA doesn't really talk about it. I mean, maybe it's just a case that they're like, well, this guy hasn't been really having an income, you know, through boxing for years now. Maybe we can uh, let it go back to court, let him sort of bleed himself, dry of cash. I mean, just who knows what the situation is. But given they've already lost once to Frizzikendo in court, 
there's nothing to say that they won't lose again. And especially given, um, you know, that he has been sort of keeping his foot on the throat and taking them back to court periodically to just to have a few things put before a judge. So, yeah, I mean, Fraser Kendo is going to keep pushing this. What the end goal, the end game is and how this is all going to pan out in the end. And this is just another saga and a chapter in it. It is certainly unclear, but I mean, the whole hashtag justice for Frez, I mean, we'll see how that goes. But in terms of the rankings proper, um, the top 15, the update, not too much to really talk about because um, the big update was Frez Kendo getting uh, dropped like a sack of potatoes off a cliff out of the 15. Frank Sanchez Foray, he comes in at number 14. And as a result, that sees Christopher Lovejoy drop down one. And interestingly, um, the whole thing with uh, Trevor Bryan and Christopher Lovejoy never happened. Remembering Christopher Lovejoy was talking about the 3rd of October that that fight for the WBA regular title would be happening. And I did approach Trevor Bryan um, via social media just a couple of weeks ago saying, what is actually happening? Christopher Lovejoy has said that you're going to be fighting him. Is this actually correct? Are you able to shed some uh, shed some light? And he uh, did sort of uh, tick the heart sort of option um, on Instagram via direct message. And yeah, so I mean, none the wiser on that front. But then later, sort of a week or two ago, Christopher Lovejoy just sort of said, look, um, they didn't end up um, sending me the contract. I've been waiting for it. The fight isn't happening as I said it would be. So, I mean, who knows where that is going and whether... You know, how much was to that? Because Christopher Lovejoy was saying he was getting deposits and all sorts. He had certain details. He said he was going to get ranked and it did happen. And I did note that a few a few media media organizations have subsequently in this latest update after it said that um, he's now been ranked again, even though he was ranked a couple of months ago. He actually said, I will be included in the rankings, which will make me eligible to fight for the title. And it happened. But uh, since then, things have seemingly flamed out, as has often happened with Christopher Lovejoy. But Frank sanchez Foray, hopefully we see him back in the ring soon. He is at number 14, but the rest of the 15, it remains the same. Trevor Bryan, Alexander Usyk, and then you have uh, a cabal of uh, PBC heavyweights. Luis Ortiz, Andy Ruiz Jr., Adam Kovnatsky, Charles Martin, Chris Ariola. So five of them, and we really don't know what's happening for uh, a decent chunk of them, which cards they're going to be appearing on, etc., Andy Ruiz Jr. was out on social media the other day saying that he is now going to be fighting in 2021. And that fact, along with uh, some of these other heavyweights sort of a, in a bit of a limbo they've been sitting, was the basis of my most recent Patreon video. So patreon.com forward slash Boxing Squared if you want to check it out. And someone actually said to me that I need to, uh, to mention in my videos more that people should smash the like button. So if you could do so, that would be great. Uh, but then at number eight, you have uh, Agit Kabayal. Uh, number nine, Michael Hunter. Derek Chisora at 10. Kubrat Pulev, um, number 11. That fight with Joshua seemingly announced soon. Ifea Jagba, number 12. Sergey Kuzman at 13. And as we know, Frank sanchez Foray, the new entrant. And Christopher Lovejoy, the enigma of the heavyweight division. He stays in the, fift uh, in the 15 at the bottom spot, number 15. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.